Oh my god! <laughs> what the fuck is going on with my hair? <laughs> That's why we wear hats. Hey everybody, and welcome back! I have more Dollar Shave Club to show you guys, but this time things are a little bit different. Now, of course, we know it is called Dollar Shave Club, shaving, but they offer so, so, so much more than just razors, which is why I'm not even going to really show it to you. We're going to show you everything else. Most importantly, Dollar Shave Club every month comes with Ziggy, the dog. For $5 a month, you get to pet Ziggy, the dog. That's, that's not true. I'm sorry. It's not true at all. So, uh, you're going to get your pamphlet here. Lots of information. People that use the products and are working there um, and then all their other good stuff oh some informationals you know you come with your essential poop reading material just some cool stuff to read about while you're taking a shit you know they got you covered there and some promotional promotional products <laughs> but let's get into the actual packaging shall we looks like we're starting off with my absolute favorite thing to have i travel a lot a lot like the month of june i was gone like 15 to 16 days i just travel a lot and you know what happens when you travel a lot you have to eat out a lot and when you eat a lot you shit a lot especially in san diego because i ate a lot of tacos with hot sauce these came in handy these are called the one wipe charlies these are essentially moist towelettes for your tender sphincter how could you go wrong with that? You can't! You just cannot! These are fantastic. They're one use. I mean, unless you want to use them twice. Don't suggest it. You'll probably get shit on your fingers. We have the Lavender Soothing Body Cleanser. See, you can smell it. It's really nice. It's, it's great stuff. Lavender is a great scent for calming you down right before bed. Or uh, if you're having a rough day, we have the Dr. Carver Shave Butter. It's not just for your face. You can use it on your legs, your your armpits, your 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 ball satchel, whatever you feel like you got to shave. They got you covered with the shave butter, baby. And of course, you know I got to show it because it's here. We got the razor and the handle, and the blades. You guys have seen that a hundred times. That's not what we're focusing on today. We are here to show you. The Dollar Shave Club has a lot more to offer than just shaving. Yeah, I know what's in the name. You know, Dollar Shave Club. It's fine. You go to a fish market, you can get more than just fish. Ugh. You know what I'm talking about? It's fine! So Dollar Shave Club is basically giving away this little kit that I showed you. It's got three trial sizes of three of their top products. Those were the ones that I showed you, of course. The Charlies, the Shave Butter, and the Body Cleanser. And with my code, Dollar Shave Club, Slash Panda! Yeah, with that code, you can get everything that I just listed here for $5. Uh, it is a fantastic deal. It, it is a great way to have the products you need delivered straight to your door at a good, cheap monthly price. It's hard to beat. Beats going to the store and dealing with people who have no idea what they're talking about. So, hope you guys check it out. It helps me bring you guys cool content like this. It helps me provide you guys with really cool little deals like this as well. So, thank you all so much. Let's get to the Q&A, shall we? Hey everybody, welcome back. It has been a hot, hot minute since I've done a Q&A. I don't even remember the last time that I did one. I know it hasn't been since I've hit a million subs. So, hey! Welcome! All the new people. <laughs> uh, whenever I do Q&As, I ask for questions on Twitter. Uh, not on YouTube, so if you guys have questions for me, follow me on Twitter, and then when I tweet out the next Q&A, shoot them my way. Um, it's really easy. I save a lot of them. I can't use all of them because there's so many. Um, so if you get, you know, like, favorited on Twitter, doesn't mean that it's getting saved or used for the video. It just helps me weed out some of this stuff before I get going. But, uh, I hope you guys understand. I'm sure you do. If not, blah, 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 whatever. We're gonna go into the questions. We're gonna do this like we've always done. We're gonna have some regular questions. And then at the end, we're gonna do some rapid fire because it's it's fun and it's goofy. And uh, I like it. 
what else do you want? <laughs> so uh, let's get into it. We're going to start off with our first question here. Let me open it. I'm a dingus. Uh, it is from Caitlin. Caitlin asks, how do you stay so positive even in negative situations like now with the stuff happening with YouTube? You know, that's a really good question. And uh, it's something that I actually have to ask myself all the time. <laughs> and uh, there's one thing you guys have to understand about uh, the YouTube situation and uh, well, not the situation. You guys know about the whole ad thing. And then uh, they were doing some stuff with sub feeds recently. So YouTube is always messing with stuff. Um, but as a YouTuber themselves, I mean, I granted we are only on the internet. We're not celebrities or anything like that, but uh, we are entertainers. And uh, a lot of what you see, even when we're recording through hard times is uh, we're putting on a face for you. It's just the reality of it. I Meaning we don't want to put out boring content where we're looking upset and stuff, unless that's a video where we rage, but that's different. You understand that. But uh, as far as staying positive behind the scenes, it's just, uh, I've worked the seven and eight, nine dollar an hour jobs before. And uh, even through the thick and thin with YouTube, I'm doing much better than I was working those jobs. And uh, that's, that's honestly the biggest inspiration and uh, motivation that I have. Uh, is because things can be worse, things have been worse, uh, not necessarily with YouTube, but just with my life. And I'm very fortunate to be in the spot that I'm at and I don't take it for granted. And uh, that's how I keep going every day. So you guys might see me bitch here and there or we'll make jokes about sub feeds and monetization. And uh, it does suck, you know, it does affect us. But as far as keeping going, um, it's just the knowledge that things have been worse, things could be worse. And uh, I'm very lucky to be where I'm at. So I just roll with it. Thank you, Caitlin. That's a good question. I like to start off with something a little bit more serious. And then we go into something like this, just from Renzi. He says, my girlfriend asks how you get your beard so luxurious and amazing because I need a beard apparently. Oh, buddy. <laughs> uh, I don't honestly, how do I get my beard so luxurious and amazing? And like right now my beard is a mess. I haven't trimmed up or anything in like a week. But uh, honestly, it's it's I want to say it's really simple, um, but maybe some people just can't grow beards. I mean, it, it took me a while at first, but now it's pretty, pretty good. I always have trouble growing hair like right here. I almost get like the big mutton chops that they had like when they were signing the Declaration of Independence and shit. It looks really it, it looks terrible. So I kind of just push my hair over here once it's long enough. But uh, wash it, condition it and get some beard oil, dude. It keeps it uh, without it getting too scraggly when you condition it. Uh, the beard oil is great. Keep it trimmed up. Um, don't just let it grow out. Like when, when girls who grow their hair out, they have to get trimmed to get the split ends and stuff cut off and just have healthy hair. You have to do that shit with your beard too, man. Like there'll be, you'll occasionally have one hair that just sticks out like 12 inches. It, like it, it looks like some sort of like fucking snake sticking out of your face. You gotta take care of those dudes. Like. Guys, when you're walking around, your beard is looking like you got an azalea bush growing on your face. Take care of that shit, man. A big beard looks cool, but it has to be groomed. Like, god damn. But if you want some sort of like quick herbal voodoo remedy, take some elephant feces and rub it on your face. Uh, let it sit for approximately 30 minutes until it has turned into uh, like a hard crust. And uh, you have a beard. You're welcome. Horsky wants to know, what do you hope to achieve on YouTube? Two million subs, winning every Uno game? You know, Jesus, Uno game. Um, well, uh, two million subs is definitely a goal. Uh, I would hope to achieve more. Um, but honestly, my biggest goal on YouTube is just to uh, just to entertain people, uh, make a good living, and uh, open up more doors. For myself in the future it would be incredibly naive of me to assume that youtube is going to last forever nothing lasts forever <laughs> um so what i want to try to achieve in my years of doing youtube is making as many connections uh doing as much networking as i can uh, i've i've done plenty of film shoots with with sponsored events and and being on set for different streams and i've met different production crews and uh, i'm managed by a company that's owned by machinima uh, or I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm with Machinima, they're owned by Warner Brothers, and there's lots of connections to be made there, and I have made lots of them already, so ultimately my goal to achieve with YouTube is for YouTube to be uh, a step in the right direction, or in the next direction uh, of my life and my career, uh, to continue being an entertainer, because this is what I've always wanted to do. 
I never knew if it wanted to be like stand-up comedy or acting. Uh, YouTube kind of just panned out to be something as a, as a way to promote myself and be myself uh, and run the show um, the way I want to. So uh, we will see. Um, nothing is ever a guarantee, but man, I would love to continue uh, making people laugh for the rest of my life. And do it as my job. I mean, you can't argue with that, right? <laughs> Thank you for the question, by the way. I appreciate that. Oh, man. Blue hit me with a tough one, which is top five TV shows. And I'm not going to be able to list these in like a top five order just because it's really, really hard. <laughs> uh, it's really tough to list these out. Um, so I actually have to think about this for a second. Lost is definitely going to be in the top. Yeah, Lost will be in the top five for sure. Season one of True Detective with Matthew McConaughey and uh, Woody Harrelson. That is fantastic. I'm not going to include anime in this. I'm just going to go with like uh, like major network television or, uh, or stuff like HBO, like TV shows. I'm not going to go with anime. You know, that's that's its own separate category. So uh, we've got Lost, True Detective Season 1, because it's kind of its own entity. So we'll call that its own TV show. Uh, Parks and Rec is going to be on there. You got to include some comedy. Parks and Rec is a show that I've watched like... <laughs> three or four times right now. I already have what like my number one is overall, so I'm just trying to think of what number four would be. Um, I know I said these aren't gonna be in order, but there is a clear favorite for me. Um, it's always been my favorite show, so I'm just trying to think of what is, what is the last one? What can I eliminate and just be like, yes. That is a show that I absolutely love. I know what I'll say is number four, just because it's a guilty pleasure and it's funny. Um, <laughs> And I'm just a sucker for these kind of like uh, goofy reality shows, I guess. But we'll say Pawn Stars. <laughs> I just love Pawn Stars. I don't know why. I have always loved Pawn Stars. But uh, my number one show ever, overall, like just I've seen it literally every episode, probably three to four, maybe even five times on some of them. Some of them I've watched multiple times, but uh, The Golden Girls. The Golden Girls, in my opinion, is the greatest sitcom ever made. Uh, it is my favorite show ever. Uh, I get a lot of my sense of humor from growing up with that show. Um, for any of you older fans who are watching, or people who are just a little bit more into older sitcoms and TV, uh, if you know about The Golden Girls and you've seen it, you probably understand. But uh, I just was at San Diego Comic Con. ABC had a huge merchandise booth. Tons of Golden Girl stuff. Uh, I had to ship it back home, so I don't have any of it here yet to show. Uh, if you guys were interested, but uh, it is fantastic. So my favorite show is the Golden Girls. The other four, it's a toss up. But uh, uh, yeah, we'll go with those. Steph wants to know what's been the best thing that's happened to you so far this year. Um, this is kind of a short answer and it's straight to the point, Steph, but I'm gonna say uh, hitting a million subs. Something I've been working towards for seven years on and off and it's it was nuts it was seriously nuts uh, hitting a million subs so uh it was super super special to me it means a lot uh i can't think of anything else this year that really comes close to being that impactful that really stands out to me at all because that was uh that's something i'm gonna remember forever honestly and i was pissed drunk when that happened <laughs> i was at the bar with wildcat and, and tons of other friends and, uh, and people that I've worked with over the years that I've been doing this with since the beginning. And I hit a million subs with them at the bar and I got pretty drunk, but I know I'll remember that night forever. So that's gonna be my answer, thank you. Super Teddy, and this is why I didn't say anything about animes in the, uh, the TV question, specifically ask what's your favorite anime movie? And that's easy for me. My favorite anime movie is Akira. Yeah, there's just nothing else that that is. That stands out to me. Uh, Cowboy Bebop has a movie, Knocking on Heaven's Door. Trigon has a movie, uh, Badlands Rumble. And those are two of my favorite series ever. But as far as just like comparing those films to uh, Akira, uh, I just don't think they stand up at all, honestly. Akira is just in a league of its own. Uh, it's a classic. I've always loved it. I've seen it uh, countless times. And it is, it's timeless, man. It is a fantastic movie. If you guys haven't seen it, check it out. I've got... Random Akira art scattered throughout my room and shit, so. Definitely a favorite of mine. Nicholas wants to know, why do you love Pokemon so much? And if somebody already asks that, where did the fake laugh mean come from? Um, so two questions in one. I'll answer both of them since I'm, I'm a nice guy. 
Uh, why do I love Pokemon so much? It's just, uh, it's something I grew up with. I've always enjoyed, uh, JRPGs, uh, especially, like, the mobile, like, Golden Sun, Final Fantasy, like, the early Final Fantasies, like, 1 through 6. Golden Sun, like I said, Pokemon, of course, was, was fantastic for this. There are tons of games that sort of have that mechanic and, and style, but Pokemon always stood out to me because I just love, I'm, I'm a collector, I've always enjoyed collecting things growing up. And Pokemon was a game that incentivized collecting things. And that was awesome to me, because I'm like, I get to play a game with these cool creatures, and then I get to collect these little bastards at the same time. And uh, my love for the game has just always stuck with me. I mean, I've been, been playing Pokemon for 20 years now, and I love it, still do, always will. Pokemon is just, uh, it just speaks to me, I guess. And uh, for your second question, uh, where did the fake laugh meme come from? Uh, well, it started as people actually accusing me of having a fake laugh. In the comments and on Twitter or just social media, we'll call it, you know, we'll group it all together. And uh, people were serious. They thought that I was faking my laugh. It's, it's not. I hope you guys don't think that I actually fake my laugh. I'm not that desperate for attention. You know, I, I'm just being myself on my YouTube channel. I have a ridiculous laugh. I always have. I just totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's it's not it's not fake. Uh, but the meme just started, you know, as as I called people out uh, that were accusing me, and I said, hey, it's not fake. You know, I I have no way to prove it, but uh, that's just who I am. That sort of turned into a meme, like where people just say like, you know, fake laugh and stuff. And, uh, it's kind of a it's kind of died off a little bit. I still get it from now or from time to time, but I'm sure because I've talked about it now, I'll get some. Jaden wants to know, how's life, man? Should we be expecting anything big in the future? Well, if things are going according to plan, this video should be up on, it should be up on Monday, July 30th. Um, which means that as of yesterday, uh, I launched a brand new merchandise store, uh, which I can link in the description. Um, and uh, there's a new million subscriber video out where it's my favorite clips over the last seven years. And uh, that's that's gonna be it for right now. That Those two things were quite a lot of work to put together. But uh, as you're watching this and you haven't seen those, or if you haven't checked out the shirts, go do it. Go do it. There'll be links in the description. So check them out. How's life, man? I'm doing pretty good, Jaden. How are you? Here we go. Legit Gaming Titan wants to know, how long have you been a Browns fan and why? Uh, PS Love the Videos, you're one of my favorite YouTubers. Keep it up. And today is your birthday. Well, uh, I got a little delayed recording this, so happy belated birthday. This was two days ago. And uh, thank you so much for watching the videos. But to answer your question, how long have I been a Browns fan and why? I was born in 89. And the first thing my dad gave me, like as a kid, like other than like a blanket, <laughs> uh, like as a gift, he gave me like a Browns shirt. At least that's like the first thing that I remember. I, I had this this Browns like blanket or shirt ever. I grew up with him playing Madden and uh, watching football with him. And I think my earliest memory is around like seven or eight. Uh, and that's right around the time that Cleveland left and went to Baltimore to become the Ravens. And then they came back and as an expansion team in 99. So I've been watching them religiously since 1999. So that's been how long? 19 years? 18 years? One of those two? A long, 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 long time. And why is because I just grew up with them. You know, that was that was my team growing up. I rooted for them. It was a cool way to bond with my dad. We had a lot of fun going to games together. Um, and I just, I'm loyal to my team, man. Like even though we're absolute garbage, uh, for basically the last 18 years, we've had one playoff or one playoff year. Uh, I just can't can't give up on it. You know, that's just how I am. Just a loyal dude to the team. So it's tough. <laughs> they don't make it easy, but uh, yeah, that that's why. That's definitely why. So this question is from Dom. It reads. <laughs> uh... <laughs> this is fucking weird, Dom. The question is, who's your favorite Browns player? Um, probably Duke Johnson Jr. I like Duke a lot. Duke is fucking good. Um, and Miles Garrett. I gotta love Miles, man. Miles is a good guy and he's a great player. So, uh, yeah. 
Maddie's got a good question. I was looking for this one. She says, have you ever met someone in person that you have looked up to online? If so, how does it feel? Uh, yes. Sorry. Yes, I have. I have. Uh, I've actually met pretty much every person that inspired me to become a YouTuber. Uh, so these people include Hutch, uh, C Nanners, Sark, and uh, a guy named John who now works for Twitch. And I've met all of them. Uh, I've befriended most of them. And uh, it's just, it's honestly kind of mind boggling. Like it's not something you would ever imagine that you'd be able to do is, uh, is meet someone who helped like uh, inspire and, and push you, not, not, not literally. I mean, they didn't know me at the time, but inspired me to do what I did or do what I do now. And uh, to have been able to met them and, and play with them in games and, and hang out with them in person at events. Uh, it's been crazy. It's it's really 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 cool. So I wouldn't trade that for the world That's honestly one of the coolest things about this that I've been able to do in my opinion is uh, sort of meet the, the people behind uh, the personas and the channels that I met or that I that I used to watch myself and still do and and now that I do that I worded that terribly <laughs> It's just been super, super cool, honestly. It's uh, meeting them was incredible. I'm, I, I still talk to uh, to Hutch and Sark regularly. Nanners is out and about doing his own stuff, and John and I have just met once, but uh, he's a cool guy as well. So, yeah, it feels awesome. Thank you, Maddie. And then my old buddy. Oh, jeez. Talk about fantasy football. He wants to know who are you taking in the first round of fantasy football this year, and that is. Uh, tough question to answer because I, until the draft happens and uh, draft order is established and I know which order I'm picking in, I don't know. Uh, my goal is to go after a versatile running back. Um, you know, if it's it's the first round, if I get a nice draft position, uh, someone like Le'Veon Bell, David Johnson, Alvin Kamara, you know, even Mark Ingram might slip down the charts a little bit, but I'm going to be a little tentative on taking him in the first round just because he's suspended for four games. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott is a great pick. Todd Gurley. I, I don't think I'm going to touch a wide receiver first round. I mean, even if, unless I'm like Antonio Brown is there or something, um, but I, I really need someone in a PPR league who's going to run the ball, who's going to catch the ball and produce touchdowns. So my goal is one of those backs because I need a good fantasy back. Last year, I, I drafted DeMarco Murray like a dumbass. We all know how that went. So <laughs> um, to wrap up the regular questions here, we got a bunch of questions about sneakers. Well, not a bunch. There's five, but I'm going to group them all together into just like a general sneaker discussion. And then we'll go from there. How's that sound? Good? Good, because that's what we're doing. All right. Here we go. So we've got some sneaker questions. Uh, I'm gonna try to answer them uh, as well as I can while keeping it reasonable uh, <laughs> and not talking for too long. So uh, Joe Bop wants to know, what's a, what kind of sneakers do you recommend to someone that knows nothing about sneakers? I think an awesome place to start, whether you're looking to start like collecting shoes or just looking for a good pair of comfortable shoes uh, would be anything with a boost sole from Adidas. So like, I have an NMD, pair of NMDs here, uh, with the soft soles, the, the boost soles, and uh, I think they're stylish as shit, and they're super comfortable. They have the prime knit material, uh, it's super soft, it stretches with your foot, these are super comfortable. Or you could roll with uh, an Ultra Boost, which is sort of like the original boost shoe. Um, these are the undefeated, so they're not always going to have this on here, they're usually just a flat white flat black or whatever colors or colorway you want to go with any of the things that have like these boost soles on them i highly recommend they're super comfortable they're a little pricey you know i will say that you can get some of the nmds for like 130 i think the cheapest ultra boost you'll find unless there's a sale like like so stock price or msrp is like 180 and when you start getting into the specialized ones and stuff like that uh, a little bit more expensive but uh <laughs> Uh, that's where I would start, man. That's where I started, and uh, I still love those shoes. They're they're my everyday wears, the Boost and the NMDs. Is it Lila? Lila? I'm so sorry. I, I want to say it's Lila. It says, what is your favorite pair of shoes that I have? Any that you're looking forward to buying? And then Kayla asks, you know, what is your favorite pair of shoes? And the Milkman wants to know, are you a sneakerhead? If so, how bad? And then Sean, I'll save your question for last. So three of these kind of are around the same question. So I'm going to say, you know, this is a little... 
cliche, but my favorite pair of sneakers that I have is uh, my white Cement 4s. These, not only are these like the favorite shoes that I have, but I also feel like they're like a must-have pair of shoes for sneakerheads and collectors and people who just have a like a respect and love for sneakers. There's just something about the Cement 4 that stands out. Uh, it's an incredibly good looking shoe, despite the fact that it's nearly 30 years old. It just holds up. It's almost like a timeless design. I'm just sitting here looking at it because I like it so much. Like there's, I literally have nothing bad to say about the Jordan 4, um, specifically the white cement. And then another pair sticking with the cement theme are the black cement threes. Oh, another must have. Uh, I mean, these things are classics. They're absolutely beautiful shoes. Unfortunately, Jordan's quality control over the years has, not over the years, but honestly within the last like year or two, it's really started to uh, tank. Um, but I mean, these are like must have sneakers for me. Like uh, recently they did a restock and I was gonna buy a second pair just to have them on ice, just to have them ready in case I ever need a new pair or I thrash the other ones, but uh, I missed out on it. The white cements, you're probably gonna have to get resale. They're not cheap, but uh, they're they're fantastic shoes. I wear them a ton. I take them with me in almost every con just because they look good, they feel good, and uh, I feel good wearing them. Then to get to the second part of the Milkman's question, uh, how bad is the sneaker collection? I mean, at this point in time, kind of hard to see, but this whole half of my office is just shoes and shoe boxes. Uh, I think I'm sitting on like 30, 30 to 35 pairs right now. And it's ever growing. Like I just got some new all white threes. I bought some Reeboks uh, out in San Diego. There's the new cement tens coming out this weekend. There's the new off white Prestos dropping. Like I'm always looking at shoes. I know a lot of you will make a comment about me buying shoes in that golf video, but those really were for my friends. Those were not the ones I posted on Instagram. Uh, I bought three of my friends new pairs of basketball shoes. That way we can all play together just to take care of them. Like, I'm fortunate. I have, uh, I have the money to do it. So I took care of them. And then Sean, he says, what is your grail shoe? Do you own it? So uh, grail shoes in quotes because it sort of means like, what is my, my, my holy grail of shoes? What is the one that I have to have? And dude, you know what? That's that's a really tough question uh, because there are so many sneakers that are kind of just out of my reach right now, at least reasonably. Uh, I mean, a lot of these shoes I could buy if I wanted to, but I'm not gonna liquidate my savings account to do it. But uh, the Cause Jordan collection, oh, I need them. <laughs> uh, I love the Cause Jordans. I don't have those. Uh, the PS and Y Jordan 12s, I absolutely love. Uh, and I don't have those either. There are some of the early human race NMDs that Pharrell did that are like seven grand that I would love to have just because I love the Pharrell NMDs. I just love NMDs, honestly. I, they're comfortable. I think they look good. You can wear them with different outfits, but I don't have them just because I don't, I'm not spending $6,000 on a pair of shoes, man. Even the ones that are 700, that's a lot of money. <laughs> that's more money than I want to spend on a pair of shoes. And uh, I mean like the off-white Jordan ones and stuff, of course I'd love to have, you know, I'm sure I'll pick up those one day, save up for a few months and buy them. But uh, yeah, I, I really want those cause. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that wraps it up for the sneaker stuff. You know, I can go more in depth than that in a later video. But uh, let's let's move on to the old rapid fire round, baby. This is where shit gets fun. So as you guys know, we're gonna have a couple of questions. We're gonna hit them with some short, sweet answers. And then we're done. We're done for the day. We'll move on to the next video and y'all can live your motherfucking lives. Or just watch the next video, you know, that's fine too. <laughs> yeah, do it. So we're starting off with Kylie. Who says, how do yes it surgery on Kino the Mito? Diana wants to know, do a barrel roll. Braditz wants to know, have you ever pretended that your boner was a gear shifter? No, that would fucking hurt, dude. 
Why are you yanking on your cock? You ripped that fucker off. Uh, Brad and St I already read that one! Will wants to know, fuck! I don't even know what to say! I don't have an answer for that! It's not a question! Matt wants to know, is it gay to suck dick when money is tight? No! Get that money, son! <laughs> do what you gotta do. Darren wants to know, on a scale of 1 out of 10, what's your favorite color in the alphabet? Pumpkin! Anthony wants to know, well, I'm Anthony. This is a different Anthony. He says, we know how you feel about KDOT. What are your thoughts on J. Cole? Honestly, probably my least favorite member on Dreamville. I'm all about J.I.D. and Boz and Earth Gang right now. I just think they're better. McMack Milk wants to know, what is your phone number? Oh, hold on one second, man. My phone number is... Did you write that down? Well, we got a luck. That's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Once again, thank you Dollar Shave Club for sponsoring the video. If you guys are interested in this product, there's going to be a link in the description. I need to go get my chair because this is really fucking uncomfortable. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm going to get out of here. Peace and shakong grease. Later.